Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms, and today I figured let's do something a little different. I've been doing some upgrades on some of my flashlights, starting with my uh, Streamlight Stinger that I upgraded to an LED, and then uh, I found a bunch of uh, Mini Maglite LED upgrade kits that were on clearance, so I picked those up and did one of those uh, not too long ago. And then just the other day I picked up a little uh, keychain flashlight, and I, I did the review of that here and man, oh man, was that thing impressive. And it got me thinking, just about flashlights in general, how much has changed over the years. So uh, I decided to do kind of a historical video because some of you younger guys out there may not realize just how good we got it right now. When I started in the business of being a mechanic, uh, your best bet for a flashlight, I mean a high-end flashlight, was to get a five or six cell uh, mag light. And that was just a, a, what was called a Krypton bulb. And, uh, you know, that was what you dealt with. Uh, later on, of course, uh, more technology, higher voltages first came along with standard bulbs or high-end bulbs, halogen bulbs, Krypton bulbs. Uh, eventually, LED came around. But uh, let's rewind for a second here. Let me show you what a flashlight looked like when I was young. Uh, this is as close as I could come to uh, finding a flashlight similar to what was available. They were actually used to be made in like pot steel, just like thin aluminum or thin steel. And uh, this one's an EverReady. Uh, Rayovac makes a lot of them. EverReady made some. They would be two D cell batteries. Yeah, remember those? You hardly even have anything that runs on D cell batteries anymore. But it would take two batteries, has a standard flashlight bulb, and a simple on off switch. And that was it. And uh, we'll do some comparisons. As a matter of fact, uh, Let's just do it right now. Here's the garage wall test that we've been running through. And this is what this light looks like. And uh, for the average homeowner, that's, that's pretty much what you had in your house. You had something like that. Um, another type of light you would have back in the good old uh, 70s and early 80s would be uh, what's called a lantern light, which was a 6 volt, uh, usually a dry cell battery, and slightly larger. Here's a picture of one here. I'm not taking the battery out. I actually still have one of these. And uh, I do have some 6-volt batteries for them, but uh, this is what it looks like. It's a, a wider spray of light. So distance-wise, I don't really remember them being any better or worse, but they lit up a larger area because they had a, a wider beam. Again, not a focusable beam. So you had more light, and it ran for a longer time because it had a much bigger battery, <clears throat> but it still wasn't very bright. So uh, in, the, in the, you know... As time progressed, flashlight technology got better. Here is a, a regular mini mag light. Um, I do have a regular mag light, but again, it's been upgraded to LED, so it's not really effective here for show and tell. But the AA mini mag lights were like revolutionary when they came out. Compact size, high powered, regular bulb, and they put out a pretty decent amount of light and you had a focusable beam. This was pretty good technology. And this is pretty well where it peaked out for a while. This is about as good. You got halogen or krypton bulbs, and uh, that's, that's the maximum amount of power you're putting through the light. Here's what it looks like against the garage wall to give you an idea of what a, a mag light would put out as far as light. Now around that time, uh, in the professional automotive industry, we started getting uh, rechargeable batteries, which was really nice. The Stinger didn't come out until I think the uh, mid-90s, maybe the early 90s, I can't remember exactly, but this is a Streamlight Stinger, and for the automotive and police, law enforcement, that kind of stuff, this was pretty revolutionary. Now again, this one's been upgraded to LED, pretty much all models made now are LED, but uh, it was a great flashlight. But this thing, even in the mid-90s, was about 150 bucks, and that got you two batteries, a charger, and uh, the light itself. Here's what it looks like with the LED upgrade against the uh, garage wall there. So certainly super bright, but... It's kind of cheating. It's think of it more like a, a mag light on crack. <laughs> okay, and at the same time that those were coming out, kits like these Ryobi that I have here, this Ryobi flashlight, they were going a different route. It wasn't so much that they had ultimate bulbs or ultimate, uh, you know, focusable beams. It was a lot of volts. So using a rechargeable battery you had DeWalt, Matco, Snap-on. They all came out with lights something like these, shaped differently perhaps, but rechargeable batteries that also fit other things. They threw out pretty good light. A lot of people liked them because you could relay this down and you could angle this light and have it working wherever you need it to be while you were in a car. 
I still use this. This is an 18 volt bulb. Here's what it looks like against the garage wall. And you know, not bad. Uh, non focusable beam is probably its biggest downfall. It is a conventional bulb. Uh, I've seen and heard people who upgraded these to LED bulbs. You can get like a one watt LED. But it, you know, again, the technology has been surpassed so drastically that it's not really worth upgrading these things unless you just happen to come across a really good deal and you still use yours. I do use mine, but the incandescent bulbs work just fine. Then came LEDs. And the first LEDs were uh, not that impressive. The uh, biggest boasting they had was that they used less output of power, so the batteries tended to last longer. This is uh, probably two or three years into the LED craze. This is actually a Maco tool. It takes three AAA batteries. Uh, it's a bright white light, and it, and it does work well for tasks up close, but it has no throw. The, the bulbs, and there's uh, I think there's nine or ten of them in there, they're just not very bright, but together they put out a fairly decent close-up light. Here is what it looks like against the garage door. And you can see non-focusable, but a decent light. Now, bulbs, or I'm sorry, flashlights like these are still made to this day, very inexpensively. Usually for Black Friday, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, they'll have like nine packs of little plastic ones of these. Most of the time, they even come with very inexpensive batteries. And by about the time the batteries run out, the flashlights are broken. It's a miracle that somehow or another this Maco one is still operational, because I swear I probably got this close to 15 years ago. But it still works. So that was the low end of LED. And over the years, LED for professional use really started to ramp up. You had higher loom outputs. You had more and more power going into them, higher battery capacities, better rechargeable batteries. You ended up with your Streamline Stinger DS, your Styrons. And a host, I mean, I can't even keep up with it now. I really can't. There's so many different manufacturers who make a really quality product that throw a whole lot of looms and, and usually for a fairly reasonable amount of money. Now, obviously, if you get into real pro-grade stuff, you're paying for it a little bit because you want something that you can drop from four or five feet and it's not going to break. Um, but here is an example, and I mean, there were commercials, infomercials on the TV set for a long time. I think they finally have faded away now. But a quick search on eBay or Google will show you these rechargeable lights. They're called tactical flashlights because of the shape of the uh, cover for the lens, like you're going to smash through a window or something with this, right? I suppose you could. Uh, you probably cut your hand doing it. Um, not terribly expensive, but put out a great amount of looms. Now, I don't know what the rated capacity is, but you can pretty well cut those in half. Obviously, they're boasting. They're all made in China. This one here is a bit thicker than most of them. It uses just a fatter battery, but same 3.7 output. And surprisingly, they work pretty darn well. They do have a focusable beam. I'll show you what it looks like here against the garage door. It throws a lot of power. I mean, it's pretty much as bright as the Stinger. So it's not a bad light at all. The only downfall to these is, you know, they're Chinese. Um, I picked this up for like 11 bucks. I've seen them as cheap as $5.99. That usually includes a battery and a charger as well. So that's a pretty darn good deal. For that price, I would pick up a bunch uh, if you need flashlights and throw them in your car or whatnot. The problem is the batteries are also Chinese made. They tend not to hold a charge for very long. And uh, I've actually had a coworker who purchased one of these that had the battery uh, explode. Uh, it, the light got hot, he unscrewed the cap. When he dumped out the battery, it literally blew up on the floor, which is kind of scary. Certainly could be a fire hazard. So something to consider when you're talking about cheap Chinese stuff is you know, we're always taking the chance, right? But for the price, this is amazing technology. This right here, which puts out a god-awful amount of brightness, costs the same amount as this did in the late 70s. Two batteries and this flashlight versus this. And the power, if I hold them side by side, that's insane, right? So we're talking about, yeah, you know, I mean, sure, 30, 35 years of technological difference, but what a difference it's been. And for some reason, I just felt like talking about that and sharing that. I don't know how many old timers are out there, but I'm sure you remember lights like these or old headlight lanterns. A lot of people that work in mines have those old battery packs that would hang off there. That kind of stuff is gone. It's done. Now we have little teeny weeny rechargeable packs, LED lights that put out massive amounts of looms. And uh, that's where the future is. It's a great future too. That little flashlight, that through night, is just insane. The amount of power it put out, here's what it looked like against the wall. Now that's a single AAA battery 
I, man, that's just nuts. That's it. I'm not preaching. I'm just enjoying the night. And I figured, why not break out some of the old flashlights that I've got laying around the property, try them out side by side, and just show how crazy it's been. It's, it's been a wild 30 years. It's been a wild 20 years. And heck, even the last 10 years, price-wise, man, what a great time to be living, right? I'm Eric, owner of Far Point Farms. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, perhaps you'll consider liking and subscribing because there'll be more like it. Take care.